Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 15 of our podcast, Kids Plorers. We're so excited that you're joining us on our journey to explore and discover new things. You might remember that in our last episode, we were celebrating Isabella's birthday. In honor of her birthday, we decided that we should explore different birthday traditions from around the world. We learned about traditions from Mexico, Israel, Vietnam, Jamaica, and other countries, and learned that there are so many different ways to celebrate a birthday. We also realized that not only do we celebrate the traditions of our country, but we also celebrate our own family's traditions. At the end of the episode, Isabella had a very special message from our dear friend, Professor Smarty Pants, who told us that he was busy researching the wolves of Yellowstone National Park. Yes, I loved his message, but I really miss seeing him. Me too. I've been waiting for today all week because I just can't wait to learn about this topic. The story of the wolves of Yellowstone National Park is just incredible, and I can't wait to visit Professor to learn about his visit with them. Me too. I want to know what makes the wolves at this park different from other wolves. Awesome! Well, what are we waiting for? To the car! We're here. Hurry up, guys. Let's go into the lab. I hear lots of footsteps. This means that my friends are here. Hello, friends. Hello, Professor. I've never been more excited to see you. I just can't wait to hear all about your trip and most importantly about the wolves. You must, must, must tell us everything you've learned about these awesome creatures. Whoa! Daniel, you sound just a little excited about today's topic. I'll let you in on a little secret. My trip was super exciting, but the whole time I was thinking that it would be better if you guys came along with me. But no worries, I came back with a ton of information to share with you about the wolves of Yellowstone National Park. Ready to start exploring? Of course! Of course. Great, let's go to the portal window machine. I need to show you some things that happened in the past. Before we dive in, it's really important that we understand who wolves really are. Oh, I know this. Wolves are the ancestors of dogs. Great for you for knowing this. You're right. Dogs evolved from wolves. We explored human evolution a few episodes back. And that story of evolution is similar for wolves and dogs. One important difference between wolves and dogs is that wolves are animals that you could find in the wild, whereas dogs are known as man's best friend. Because they live together with people, meaning that they have become domesticated. What does domesticated mean? Domesticated animals are animals that used to live in the wild, but at some point started to become friendly with humans and even started to live with people. In the case of the wolves, humans were happy to be friendly with them and share food with them because having wolves around meant that they would be protected from other dangerous animals. There were other animals that humans have domesticated, such as goats, sheep, horses, and many others. Wow, that's really cool. I can't imagine a world without dogs So I'm super happy that some wolves were domesticated by humans. Now that we learned this, let's take a look at the portal window machine. What you see on the screen is the year 1872 in America. You see, around this time, many people were moving to America. A major source of the food they ate came from hunting. Now, we learn something important about hunting when we explored the Tasmanian tigers. Of course, we did. We learned about overhunting. This is when people hunt too many animals, which can lead to that animal becoming extinct. You're right, but unlike the situation in Australia with the Tasmanian tigers, some really smart people in America at this time realized that if nothing would be done about this overhunting, Wildlife would be in big trouble and could face extinction. So what did they do about it? With the help of the American president at the time, 
Ulysses S. Grant, who signed the National Park Protection Act into law that same year, America created a protected area of land, which became the first American national park. Let me guess, this was Yellowstone National Park. That's right. The idea behind the National Park Protection Act was to preserve the natural landscape of this region, as well as the wildlife. But unfortunately, this act did not take into consideration the need to preserve predators, like the wolves, and mainly preserve animals like buffalo, elk, deer, and other smaller species. Oh no, I see where this is going. Since you said that there was a lot of hunting being done at this time, I assume that wolves were being hunted too. Unfortunately, you're right. Professor, could you please show us the year 1926 on the portal window machine? I read that by the year 1926, the hunting of wolves was so popular that the northern Rocky Mountain wolf packs, which were the packs of wolves that lived in the area of the Yellowstone National Park, had dramatically declined in numbers. At this point, it became evident that this species was slowly disappearing from the park. People would occasionally spot wolves around the park even after 1926, but sadly, their numbers were too few. The wolves that were spotted most likely were solitary wolves, meaning that they did not live in packs. Why would it be so bad if wolves will disappear from the park? Great question, and this is where it gets really interesting. You see, wolves are incredible hunters. The animals which they hunted the most at Yellowstone National Park are deer and elk. When wolves lived in the park in larger numbers, they would hunt these animals, which would help to control the population of these animals. It means that as the natural predator of these animals, the wolves would hunt the elk and deer, which would make sure that their populations would not grow too fast. When the wolf disappeared, a very important predator disappeared, which meant that there were far less dangers for the deer and elk. Less predators meant that deer and elk felt safer in the park and could bring more babies into this world. Does this mean that now there were too many elk and deer? How could it be? And what is dangerous about that? You see, the population of these animals were starting to grow, and eventually their numbers got out of control. Why is this important? If there are too many elk and deer in the Yellowstone National Park, the ecosystem of this park will not be able to survive. What is ecosystem? An ecosystem is really all living things like animals, plants, insects, and bacteria, and how they live with non-living things like the sun, soil, and rocks. That's right. In the case of the elk and deer, their main food source is vegetation such as grass, flowers, and trees, like the willow trees. When there are too many of these animals, it means that their eating habits will reduce vegetation in this area. Wait a minute, but that's actually really bad. If there were more animals eating up vegetation, isn't it creating a similar problem to when people chop down forests? You're right. This increase in eating vegetation resulted in the decline of soil and riverbank structures, as well as, of course, taking away food sources from other animals. How are they taking food from other animals? The park is huge with a lot of vegetation. You're right, but an increase in these animals created a chain of events. Eating this vegetation meant that the soil, which was losing plants and roots that kept it together, was starting to erode or break apart. And, at the same time, other animals were suffering greatly because they were also losing their habitat and food source. An example of this is an animal as small as the bee. Bees, which we explored in episode 9, were really suffering because of the rapid destruction of plants and flowers. And other animals too, like the beavers, who were not able to find as many willow trees as before, which they need to build dams. Also, different birds could not find trees to build their nests on. And a small animal like the beaver is super important. Without the dams they built, fish species in the local waters were on the decline. With this, all the animals that depended on fish for food suffered. Oh no, this means bears did not have food. 
but you can see how one species becoming an extinct changed the entire nature of this incredible park. I see it now. When wolves became extinct in the park, elk and deer did not have the same number of predators, which meant that they felt much safer and their population started to grow rapidly. What an interesting web that connected all these animals together. If you remove just one animal, this whole pyramid falls apart. But if we're still talking about the wolves of Yellowstone National Park, does that mean that they made it after all? I am so happy you asked this. Let me show you the year 1974. We are looking at the year 1974. At this time, the government finally recognized the great wolf as an endangered species. This meant that like other animals in this park, the great wolves would now be preserved as well. This is when scientists became involved in trying to preserve these incredible animals. There were many failures on the road of trying to preserve these animals, but ultimately they succeeded in restoring the ecosystem and returning this animal back to the wild of the park. In the year 1995, scientists were able to relocate 31 gray wolves from Canada to Yellowstone National Park. And boy, were those 31 wolves happy. Remember, when they came to the park, it was overflowing with food. With a large number of deer and elk at the park, their hunt for food was much easier than they had imagined. Scientists saw an immediate improvement in the ecosystem of the park after the wolves returned. The declining numbers of these animals allowed the ecosystem to thrive. Plants started to regrow where they used to be eaten by the deer and elk. This finally allowed the native animals of the park to have the food and shelter they needed. The number of deer decreased by more than half from the moment that the wolves returned. The presence of wolves also meant that these animals would no longer be present in the central parts of the park because they were afraid to be hunted by the wolves. This allowed those areas' ecosystems to recover, and today Yellowstone National Park is a protected area filled with native animals and plants and a thriving ecosystem, all thanks to the return of just one animal. This is just an incredible story. Hey, I know a few cool facts about wolves. Wolves are social animals. They like to live in packs, which are families just like us. To be able to live in families, they need to be great hunters, which wolves really are. They are super smart and can hunt animals that are bigger than them because of their large groups. They take turns taking the lead when they hunt, which allows them to rest during the hunt. That's incredible! Wolves are super smart, and as we learned today, super important to different ecosystems. I agree. Hey guys, I have a joke for you. What do you call a lost wolf? A werewolf. Get it? Get it? Good one! Professor, thank you so much for teaching us everything about these incredible wolves. It seems like every single animal has a much bigger purpose than what we can see. Unfortunately, people often realize the importance of animals only once they are endangered or once they become extinct. That's very sad and true, and it definitely reminds me of the wonderful but extinct Tasmanian tigers, which we explored in episode 3. Yes! For our listeners who haven't had a chance to explore Tasmanian tigers with us, please tune in to episode 3 and learn about these incredible extinct creatures along with us. That was a really fun episode. I think it's time to decide what we'll explore next week. You're absolutely right. And oh goodness, do we have an amazing episode lined up for you guys. Do you like garbage trucks? Do you like watching garbage being collected from your home? then you won't want to miss next week's episode. We were super lucky to interview the City of Vaughan's manager of the Department of Solid Waste Management, Kate Dykman. Kate told us all about waste collection in our city and answered all our curious questions about how to sort waste and what happens with it once it is taken away by garbage trucks. We invite you all to join us next week as we explore this topic and please spread the word about this awesome episode. I can't wait. 
friends at home. We hope that you like joining us on our journey of learning about the incredible, smart, and important animals that are the wolves of Yellowstone National Park. If you liked today's episode, we would be so excited if you would share a podcast with all your friends who you think would like to join us on our explorations. We always look forward to hearing from you about any feedback and suggestions for what you'd like us to explore in future episodes. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram by searching Explorers Podcast. In the meantime, we would really appreciate it if you could give our podcast a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other platform that you listen to us on. It will mean so much to us, and it would really help our podcast grow. And this is it. Music